In this video, we're going to be looking at using the normal model to calculate probabilities and also using combinations when we have a normal distribution um, to, in order to find means and standard deviations as well as probabilities. So a professor at a local university teaches two statistics, um, teaches two statistics classes, as in T-W-O. Sorry about that. On the first exam for the class, each class had the following statistics. So um, for the first exam, class A had this mean and standard deviation, and class B had 75 and 80. So for class A, the minimum score on the exam was a 55 and the maximum was a 95. Based on this information, do you think the distribution of scores on the first exam for class A follow a normal distribution? And let's justify our answer here. So if I look at the Z scores for the min and the max, um, if we do have a normal distribution, then the minimum should be here and the maximum should be up here, okay, with the mean here in the middle. So let's see if that happens. Here's the minimum, 55 minus 70 all over 10, which gives me negative 1.5. And then if I look at the z-score for the max, that would be 95 minus 70 all over 10, which would give me 2.5. So if I'm thinking about this distribution with the mean here at 70 with the standard deviation of 10, 55 is going to be about here and if I think about trying to make that look like a normal curve, it actually looks like it's going to be skewed to the right, not normal, because we have this break right here. It doesn't have this tail for the minimum. So I would write, it seems, this distribution is not normal. and may be skewed right. On part B, the distribution of scores on the first exam for class B are, no, are known to follow a normal distribution. Oh, that's nice. What's the probability that a student scored below a 70 on this first exam? Show the work that leads to your answer. So I know that this distribution is normal for class B with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 8. If I calculate that associated z-score, then that would be 70 minus 75 all over 8. I should get a negative z-score because 70 is below 75, and I do. I get negative 6.25. So if I'm looking at this on a distribution for my normal curve, here's 75. I draw in my standard deviations. Remember that one standard deviation should be about where the curve changes concavity there. 70 is going to be located on my number line here, not quite one standard deviation below, but a little more than half a standard deviation below the mean. If I look at my Z chart and I look up under negative 6.3, then I get that that P value is 0 0.2660. If you would rather use the normal CDF function in your calculator, I can go over those steps with you right now. So in your calculator, if you go under Menu, Probability, Distributions, you want to choose a normal CDF. 
My lower bound here is negative infinity, or a really, 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 really small number. My upper bound is 70, with a mean of 75, and a standard deviation of 8. It gives me the exact same p-value that the table gives. And you can choose either method to calculate this final um, probability here. You can use the table that's provided in the test, or you can use the normal CDF function in your calculator. In part C, it says for class B, the scores on the second exam also follow a normal distribution with a mean of 72 and a standard deviation of 9.5. The professor decided that if a student has a combined score of 160 or higher on the two exams, that they can exempt the final. Oh, that's so nice of him. What percentage of students in class B will be able to exempt the final exam? Show the work that leads to your answer. So I need to find the distribution for the combined scores. So I'm going to take the mean from the first exam and add the mean from the second exam to combine those scores. That's going to give me 147. My standard deviation is going to be the addition of the variance from class one, I'm sorry, from exam one and exam two. Then you'll take the square root to get the standard deviation, which is 12.42. Since I'm combining two normal distributions, the result of the combination is also a normal distribution. So I can use this information to find the probability of students getting a 160 or higher. The first thing you should do is calculate the z-score. So 160 minus 147 all over 12.42. That gives me a z-score of 1.05. If I look at where that would fall on my distribution and draw my normal curve, so here's 147, my mean here in the middle. 160 is just a little bit more than one standard deviation above the mean. And then I would want to shade above because I want to know the proportion that score a 160 or higher combined score. In that case, my p-value is going to be 1 minus the probability I find in my normal chart for 1.05. So that's 0.8531. And so 1 minus that gives me 14.69% or as a decimal 0.1469. So that proportion, about 15% of his students, which seems about reasonable, would be able to exempt the final exam if they did well enough on their other two tests. Now again, just to reiterate um, how to do this in the calculator, if I wanted to do this using a normal CDF, okay, I would go under Menu, Probability Distributions, and then I would select Normal CDF. This time my lower bound is actually 160, and my upper bound is going to be a ridiculously big number. So I just press 9 until I feel like I'm done. 147, oops, 147 is the mean, and 12.42 is the standard deviation. And when I click OK, you can see I'm off just a smidgen. This is actually more accurate um, because it takes into place a more z-score decimals for us. Um, but it's close enough that it is a proc same answer.